and they chose a very good name for this so-called savior character because it means savior. Yeshua means to save. Uh, Yehoshua, Yeshua, and uh, so it doesn't mean savior, it means he who saves. So, uh, or, or it means to be saved. It's based on the words he is saving. So, um, but Joshua, who originally was the first user of the name, why don't we just call Jesus Joshua and, and go back to the original language? Why do we call Joshua one thing and Jesus something else? The word is the same because it suits us to do it that way. We like the idea of Savior associated with, with, with the word, and we don't want to associate it, though in a way Joshua is a kind of Savior. Uh, we don't want to associate it with Joshua. We don't want to mix uh, apples and oranges here. So we only apply it to our Jesus, who we love so much, and we don't love Joshua so much. So it only applies to Jesus, so it's exactly the same name. So in a Greek version of the Old Testament, they don't say, uh, Jesus has led the holy war against the Philistines. No, that's not there. <laughs> they just say Joshua led the holy war against the Philistines. I don't even know if he was crucified. I don't know anything about your Christian story. I don't know how authentic historically it is. There, there must have been about uh, several thousand people cru cru uh, crucified in this period, and they were all crucified for uh, subversive insurrectionist activities. That's what they were crucified for. So whoever was crucified, you know, was doing something anti-Roman, and uh, they got their punishment accordingly. James, you see, was not crucified. He was thrown off the wall because of charges by the high priests who didn't like him because he was, he was, he was promoting a different priesthood, a righteous priesthood a Zadokite priesthood, a priesthood of Zedek, of righteous priests. And he is called in the early church literature a priest, a high priest. Josephus was a, he tells us in his autobiography everything about himself, and I think it's absolutely true, his biography called the Vita. It's worth, it's worth, it's worth reading. He even tells us his betrayal of the Jewish cause. He was originally part of the lower priesthood, he was sent up to Galilee to be a local commander of the revolutionary type forces, part of the revolutionary movement. But then the Romans came in and he and some others were trapped in a cave near, um, I guess, near Tiberias or uh, near that area of the Sea of Galilee that we're, that we're familiar with. And uh, I think there were like 10 or so many people, I can't remember how many were in the cave with him, and they were surrounded. So they made a pact that two would be chosen to kill all the others and those two would kill themselves afterwards so, rather than surrender. But instead of doing that, Josephus, and he's very proud of this, he says Josephus and a friend killed all the others and then went out and surrendered to the Romans and proclaimed Vespasian or Titus the new, you know, uh, the new emperor coming out of Palestine. And that from that moment on, he joined the contingent of uh, really it was Titus' uh, um, Vespasian's son who was uh, moving through that area, uh, troops. Uh, but Josephus likes to turn everything into, like, well, he's just very much involved with the Pauline type of activity because he was taken to Rome as a captive and he surrendered and um, went over to the Roman side by you know, proclaiming uh, uh, the Flavians as the new and future emperors of Rome, which tended, and he presented himself as a prophet doing that, which tended to uh, occur. And therefore, they took him to Rome with him, with them ultimately, because they were so pleased with this uh, a prophecy that this Jewish so-called prophet, who was a nobody, or just a traitor, had given. And uh, they changed his name to Flavius Josephus. They adopted him into the ro royal imperial family. So he certainly had a lot to do with Paul in Rome when Paul was there. And um, yeah, I think they were involved and some others in, in, in developing this uh, new pro-Roman pacifistic messianism that was not going to cause a problem to the Roman authorities. And that's what we have today. They did a good job. Oh, absolutely. His writings are totally historical, and uh, we're grateful that we, because he's given us a huge amount of information. I don't, I don't pay attention to his mindset. 
I uh, look at his data and the people that he allows us and the things that he presents us with allows us to uh, to deal with. He even, he even introduces John the Baptist to us. Not because John is in the Christian scripture, because this is before the Christian scripture. And John is a perfect uh, Qumran type essay. He's a, you know, basically a daily bather, which is just what the Dead Sea Scroll people are doing at the same time. And he's right there in the same area, and he's killed not far away from where Qumran is. And he's obviously, I think, either an inspirer or a member of the community. And uh, But we only know about him. I mean, we don't know by name other people's names, so we know John the Baptist. But, hey, there may have been, a, you know, 350 John the Baptist at Qumran. You know, we could have called them all. Maybe we could have called one Simon the Baptist or Peter the Baptist or whatever. But it turns out this one character got his presentation in Josephus. And he even, he even says, because he did a lot of translating for them, a lot of, a lot of intelligence work, a lot of that kind of thing. When they're uh, besieging Jerusalem, he admits in his vita, he admits, they sent me out to proclaim to the people on the ramparts that if they would surrender, they would be treated well or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they all started throwing stones at him from, from, from the ramparts. And he, he admits that they all were basically calling him a traitor. And one stone hit him on the head and knocked him down. And he said a whole cheer. He admits this. A cheer went up from the ramparts when he was knocked down because they thought their enemy, Josephus, was dead. So he had turned into the opposite of a revolutionary. But you read it, and so his, his work is absolutely true. That's a real honest statement. You don't make statements like that unless you're an honest person. They cheered because they thought their enemy Josephus was dead.